This has Toronto Raptors fans fired up as Bill Simmons sort of lit the match in terms of the OG Ananobi to the Knicks trade rumors as he discussed on his podcast how it would be the perfect fit and he sees it as the direction the Knicks should go down in terms of acquiring OG Ananobi and he threw out a potential package that definitely has Raptors fans on both sides of the, of the line and whether or not they like the return. As he basically said, a one-for-one one deal, an OG Ananobi for RJ Barrett would make sense for both teams, a perfect trade, things along those lines. And I want to talk about it because I've seen a lot, I've heard a lot of opinions, I've heard a lot of back and forths on this discussion, talking to my friends who are Raptors fans, looking on Twitter, looking on Reddit, and I find this fairly intriguing because Obviously, OG Ananobi has been linked to the Knicks over the past two seasons. It's no secret that the rumors have been out there that the Knicks were offering multiple first-round picks at last year's trade deadline. And then the biggest sort of spark, you know, the little bit of gasoline, you know, lit onto this potential fire, this, you know, of reports and stuff, was an OG Ananobi signed with CAA. He switched from clutch agency to CAA. And what the heck does that mean? Well, we brought up on these videos consistently how OG Ananobi is seeking a bigger on the ball role he wants more touches he wants more opportunity within the flow of the offense and he hired a new agency in order to make that happen well what does CAA have to do with the Knicks well basically Leon Rose everyone that's sort of in that Knicks management all came from that CAA management or player agency background so there's a lot of connections there you know these nova guys that have come in jalen brunson a lot of their recent signings have all been associated with caa so the fact that og jumped ship from clutch to caa indicates there are now some nick connections that makes it a heck of a lot more likely that nicks are going to potentially target him whether it be via trade or via you know uh signing or whatever transactions you want to make happen so those smoke that has sort of been uh, perpetuating over the past year or so, and now Bill Simmons recently came out on his podcast and discussed how this is the perfect potential trade opportunity. And you look at the trade machine, you throw it in there, the OG for RJ Barrett sort of discussions, it makes sense because it works out in terms of money. OG for RJ Barrett, given the cap situations, according to this trade machine, it works out one for one. And then you see this and say, hey, RJ Barrett, does he provide what our OG does on the defensive end? He's a little bit more expensive right now. Well, you have to take a couple things into consideration before we dive into the numbers. OG Ananobi is an unrestricted free agent come the end of this offseason, and he's going to turn down his player option. He could potentially pick up the player option surprises like Gary Trent Jr. did, but that's extremely unlikely because the rumored market for OG Ananobi is around the Fred Van Vliet range, which is over $40 million per year on a shorter term contract. So that is a heck of a lot of money, especially given the fact that Toronto Raptors, you know, obviously OG will maxing out. So it depends on what OGL and Anobi will be eligible to sort of receive at that point. But getting that max sort of deal for a shorter term contract, that's going to be a lot of money. And then you compare that to a guy like RJ Barrett, who again himself is making about $23 million per year of the season, but is locked in for four years and is a guy that has shown tremendous potential and could potentially fit the Toronto Raptors really well. So let's basically take a look. Obviously, OG Ananobi, we know who he is. 26 uh, years old, still not an old guy by any means, averaging 15 points per game this season, four rebounds, 2.5 assists, 47% from the field, three point percentage around 37%. So again, fairly solid. The free throws is fairly interesting, but he doesn't get to the line too, too much. But the advanced stats in terms of where he's shooting, where he's spacing the floor, because again, every sort of transaction that we make is at least going to be funneled through what we're going to do with Scotty Barnes and then decisions we have to make regarding OG or Pascal Siakam. So, you know, OG Ananobi, how does he complement those types of guys? Well, if you look at his shooting splits in terms of what OG Ananobi, the style of a uh, game that he's been sort of doing, I mean, over 53% of his shots this season are behind the three-point line. And again, he's making about 37% of those. So that's fairly intriguing. And then the rest of his shots, a lot of them come directly at the rim. Only 3% are from 16 to three-point range. And then, you know, only 6% are 10 to 16. So OG Ananobi has not been a guy that's getting a 
creative distribution in terms of shots. He's a guy that's strictly really a 3 and D player. He takes a lot of threes. He takes a lot of buckets at the rim, but almost evenly split. So that's sort of been his role with the Toronto Raptors. Now, if we want to keep him, if we want to give him that contract, we talked about the Detroit Pistons and how if he went there, he definitely have the ball in his hands a lot more. If that's his goal, that's probably going to change. But you look at the efficiency for OG Ananobi in terms of these numbers. And again, not horrible. I mean, he's shooting 55% from 16 to three point range. So on long twos, essentially not the greatest percentage by any means from 10 to 16 feet. So he's depending on the range again, smaller sample size over the course of his career. It's been adjusted. I mean, three seasons ago, he was shooting 27% from that range. Again, smaller sample size, not remarkably efficient, especially where those long twos again, only give you two points rather than three points. But those are the types of shots that OG Ananobi probably will want to take if he's sort of re-signing with the Toronto Raptors, get that higher role in the offense. But right now, he's really a 3 and D specialist for this Raptors team. And you also can look at the number of field goals that are assisted on for OG Ananobi. And 96% of his threes are currently assisted on. And then the more interesting stat, especially this season, is 70% of his twos have been assisted on over the course of this year. So OG Ananobi definitely isn't really a creator in the Toronto Raptors offense. He hasn't really proven that he can sort of be consistently relied upon to be a shot creator for this Raptors squad. Now, is that what the Toronto Raptors need? Because obviously the ball's got to be in Scotty Barnes' hands. If Siakam stays, he's going to get a lot of touches as well. So having a 3 and D guy to compliment Scotty Barnes is pretty interesting. But I So I've seen a lot of people argue, just throw a lot of 3 and D players around Scotty and stuff like that. But personally, I want guys that are going to be able to have some shot creation. I mean, right now, again, we need shooting and we need players that can sort of get their own buckets. Our offense gets really stagnant at points because one, missed shot. So OG Ananobi has the edge in terms of being able to knock down threes, space the floor, and things along those lines. But then you talk about shot creation, being able to facilitate for others. I mean, OG Ananobi's not going to be creating many threes for his teammates. So, I mean, there's positives and negatives with OG, but the floor spacing for OG Ananobi is extremely valuable for this team, but the lack of sort of ability to create consistently being able to take players off the dribble and create stuff on their own is a bit of a negative. So that's where RJ Barrett comes into play. That's where the comparisons sort of line up with RJ, because you look at RJ stats, again, still a young guy, only 23 years old, so three years younger than OG Ananobi, 19 points per game, four rebounds, two assists, 42% from the field, and then 34% from behind the three-point line, roughly 45, shooting for 85% from the free throw line, which is extremely interesting. Definitely take uh, you know, around his career average in terms of three point percentage, but is a guy that talking to Knicks fans, you know, has apparently improved his jump shot a little bit, but is still an extremely young player. Is plays the two more than the three for an OG, so we have a better guard, you know, in terms of the point of attack defense. You know, he can shot create and things along these lines, and he's also an extremely solid defender. He works extremely hard on that end and has apparently been improving every single season. So even though OG Ananobi is clearly the better defender at this point, given his size, athleticism, and positioning, but RJ Barrett's also been a guy that is very, very capable on that defensive end. But how does his shot distribution sort of shake up? Because RJ Barrett, if you look at his sort of uh, three-point shots that are assisted on, I mean, this season, every single three that he's made has also been assisted on, which is kind of a crazy stat. You know, again, not the hugest of sample size, but still, well, how many games have they played? Oh, 21 games. To not have any threes that you've sort of created on your own is pretty interesting. But in terms of stuff inside the arc, you know, RJ Barrett is a guy that can create his own looks. I mean, only it's increased over the course of the season. You know, 55% in terms of uh, two point percentage shots that have been assisted on from his teammates, but is a guy that can definitely create. You know, RJ Barrett only about. 34% of his shots from uh, throughout the games are from beyond the three-point line. Again, doesn't take a lot of middies. Tacks the rim a lot. Loves that sort of three to ten foot sort of range in terms of his floaters and those type of little push shots that he has with the left hand. He loves those types of shots. He loves dunking on people in the lane as well. So again, shot distribution is a little bit more on the inside than an OG and an OB. And that might be a little bit concerning given the current Toronto Raptors roster. Because we've sort of seen, at least in the last couple of games, how the spacing with Pascal and 
Jakob Pertl in the front court. Things get a little bit tight. That's why we've had some success with moving Jakob Pertl to the bench. And then things really open up for Scotty Barnes, Pascal Siak. And Scotty Barnes has really taken his jump shot to a whole nother level this season. So I don't consider him a negative by any means. I consider him a legitimate three-point shooter, three and D guy. Pascal Siakam has been inconsistent from behind the three-point arc, but again, is not a floor spacer here at this point. And then RJ Barrett, you flip him for OG Ananobi. Things are only going to get more cluttered. And then we have a starting lineup where Schroeder's an inconsistent shooter. RJ Barrett's been better, but still is an inconsistent shooter. Siakam certainly an inconsistent shooter. And then Jakob Pertl himself is a guy that's a nothing burger from behind the three-point line. And then Scotty Barnes, who has taken the step up, but isn't a guy that I consider a natural three-point specialist just yet. That's no shooting whatsoever. And currently, the Toronto Raptors are in a position where they need spacing. They need guys that can create and have three-point spacing. And then if we're giving up a guy that's as talented as OG and Anobi on the defensive end, if we're making that sort of shift for like an offensive caliber player that is going to complement Scotty Barnes, complement our roster a little bit better, RJ Barrett doesn't seem to be that guy that is the perfect fit. Now, if we make roster shakeups, if we sort of change our lineup to make a little bit more sense, then sure, maybe RJ Barrett could be cool. 23 years old is an interesting piece, but personally, if we're going to get guys on the level of R.J. Barrett, I'd rather make a push for a guy like Tyler Harrow personally here at this point, even though, again, you're sacrificing more on the defensive end, and maybe R.J. Barrett could develop there along those lines, but Tyler Hero is an elite shot creator. He's an elite three-point shooter. He can attack the rim. He's sneaky. Injuries are also a question mark here if we end up going the route with Miami, trying to make one of those deals, or even a Mathurin who has some potential from behind the three-point line, and Keegan Murray. Right? These players are a little bit more intriguing to me than an R.J. Barrett, just given our current roster construction and everything that goes along. Now, RJ Barrett is one of my favorite players in the NBA. I love the way he attacks the basket, his intensity on the defensive end, and just the fact he's Canadian. I played in a tournament against him growing up, so I would love to see RJ Barrett on this team. But personally, if we uh, look at the sort of shot distributions, how it would sort of work with the, in the current confines of the Raptors offense, I'm not that sold. But I know a lot of Raptors fans want to see trades happen and frankly the packages that have been rumored you know haven't been that eye-popping so rj barrett might be the best we can get i would definitely be happy with rj barrett over you know first or something or some random picks that could potentially go down so we'll see what ends up happening let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below you guys are the best to make it this far subscribe to the channel i'm so signing out cheers